Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, I give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh Hashem Yahushah, Bahashem Makakodash, the Bible to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Greetings and salutations to you, Akim, upon the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh in truth and in sincerity. This is the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 12. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why doth this generation seek after a sign? Verily, I say unto you, there should no sign be given unto this generation. And in another scripture, in another book, it says the same thing. It says, no sign, no sign should be given unto the generation but the sign of Jonah, which the sign of Jonah represents our, our Lord's sacrifice, being in the earth for three days and three nights. And this same generation that is being read about is on the earth today. Now, the modern controversy, or may I say one of the modern controversies, there's, there's been many signs. Yeah. Oh, like you. There's been many, um, many signs given to us from um, rumors of wars, distress of nations, sedition, Plagues, all these things are taking place on the earth, as you can see. But how are our people receiving it? They're still caught up in folly. Even people who are professing themselves to be Israelites are not conducting themselves after the manner, the manner of having the fear of Yahweh Bashim uh ruling and being dominant in their life. You know, worried about marriages, weddings. Um, you got, you know, Israelites completely defiling the Lord's holy days on camera and then not repenting from it, asking you for a chapter, script, verse, showing you that they, they do err not under, understanding the scriptures. You understand? But that's that's why... I, Repentance is so important because without repentance, you, you know, a little leaven unleavened the whole lump. And you get proud, more proud, more proud, and more proud to. Pardon me. Until eventually, where you're just an unprofitable servant and not being able, and not fit for the master's use. All right. So that's regarding signs, but in this generation here, we have the sign of our Lord and Savior's coming. As they had the sign of the Lord and Savior's coming during the time of Yahweh And what was it, that sign that I'm speaking of? Um, I'm speaking of the sign of the book of Malachi. Let's go to it. Because this book of Malachi pertains... Or oh, might I say this sign is speaking of a specific man. All right. Which that man's name is Abba Bivens. All right. In his most recent carnation on earth, his name was Abba Bivens. He's taken many of the names and former and, and former carnations. Um and we're going to we're going to speak on some of those names very shortly and very swiftly with biblical scriptures, but his final carnation of as of how he's been um, configured on this earth in the recent years was through John, excuse me, um, High Priest Abba Bivens, or Rabbi Abba Bivens. All right. Just, you know, and even the, these things, these titles, 
you know, are signs of he to uh to come because he he's a high priest, yes, he's a rabbi, but who's the true rabbi? Who's the true high priest? Yahweh Shai, the top, the chief. But let's get this real quick. All right. Um this is book of Malachi chapter four, verse five. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yahweh. And we're living in that time period. Elijah was sent um, in the 20th century, or the, you know, the 20th century. Um, he was a martyr, he was martyred and assassinated. In the year of 1969, now he is the forerunner and the teacher of our teachers, such as man as um, High Priest Arya, peace be upon him. Um, you have teachers High Priest Jaikwa, peace upon his soul. Um, you have High Priest. Um, pardon me. Um, excuse me, yeah, King Masha, peace be upon his soul. All right. Now, they, he was their teacher, and they're the ones who established the One West School, who is where our teachers learned from them. And they taught other teachers, and they taught us, uh, you know, or depending on where the great came off the vine, you know. Mm. All right, so verse six, and as the scripture said, verse five, that he's going to send Elijah the prophet. So what does that show? It shows reincarnation. For those scoffers and naysayers. All right, verse 6, and it says, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And that curse is nuclear destruction. And so, since John the Baptist, since his sacrifice and martyrdom and his ministry, was um, magnified on this earth, which when I say John the Baptist, I'm speaking of, um, I'm speaking of um, High Priest Abba Bivens, all right? But in the, in, the, in the incarnation of High Priest Abba Bivens, when he came on the earth and what he established, this was biblical prophecy of the Lord's mercy and grace period and wisdom and knowledge, understand that he would impart unto us his Holy Spirit, that he was impart, would impart unto us in these last days. All right. Now, Yahweh Shai spoke of this prophecy, and he spoke of who fulfilled that prophecy. Um, of course, in that generation. All right. Yahusha spoke of it in the book of you know how it's written in Greek. That's why it's not showing up. The um spelling is a tad bit different, I'm sure. Excuse me. Must first come kinda early in the morning. Alright. Yep. All right, this is the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 11. It says, and they asked him, saying, why say the scribes that Elias must first come? I mean, we were just read why they said that, because they read it from the prophecy of the book of Malachi. All right, verse 12, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shemashiach, is about to elaborate. Pardon me. It says, and he answered and told them, 
Elias verily cometh first and restoreth all things, and how it is written of the... Excuse me, let's read that from the top. This is very important. Verse 12, And he answered and said, And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first and restoreth all things. And that was done through Abba um, Bivens, by the way. It says, And how it is written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be said and not. All right. Which, I'm going to read that aspect again, that latter part. It says, And how it is written of the Son of Man, which is Yahweh Shah, that he must suffer many things and be said enough. And that was our Lord Yahweh Shah 2,000 years ago. He suffered many things and many different persecutions. And he was rejected. And he was the rightful heir. And he was rejected. But verse 13, it says, But I say unto you that Elias, which is Elijah, the prophet, all right, pursuant to Malachi, the fourth chapter as well, all right, it says that Elias is indeed come, and they have done unto him whithersoever they listed as it is written of, of him. Right, and they are... Uh, Matter of fact, and we're dealing with the suffering of uh, John the Baptist. What? John the Baptist was beheaded. Um, and you also have um, a king, excuse me, um, uh, High Priest Al Bivens was assassinated and murdered by Muslims. He was, he, he entered into martyrdom. All right. So we see a comparison with that. And you infidels who killed him are going to pay, you know, FYI. The whole, every single Muslim is going to pay for those, the decision of a, of a few. Not to mention the many other heinous acts and barbaric acts that you have committed uh, against the Lord's people and against his law. Um, but that certainly is a data point to be taken um, in consideration when you understand the retribution and judgment that soon is about to follow. All right. Um, let me see. Is this the one I wanted though? Where it says he is. Um, let me see. That's a good one, but it's another one that I wanted. Hmm. Shalak, yeah. Right, all right. Um, most, this is Ma Matthew chapter 17, verse 11. And Yahweh shall answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, just like you people know Abba Bibb is not, and you say and esteem him as nothing. Remember, John the Baptist was a man living in the woods, very humble, very meek, didn't have many possessions, didn't have a name and preeminence. All right, and it's the same way Abba Bibbins, you people don't esteem him as anything. When this man was the chosen and the greatest prophet to ever live. Behind our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shah himself. It says that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed, and they were and they killed him. They killed Abba Bivens, and they killed John the Baptist. It says, Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. It says then the disciples understood that he, he spake unto them of John the Baptist. He was speaking to them of John the Baptist. All right. Uh, let me see here. Because I want to get some scriptures so you can have an understanding of why we, you know, give you all apologia of ours, may I say. 
So you understand why we are so confident in understanding the fact that Abba Bivens was indeed Elijah to come and the greatest prophet to ever live behind our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah himself said that. He said, uh, out of man and woman, those who come man and woman, they have no greater prophet than Elijah. That's what Yahweh Shah said, man. And so and you people don't have no type of respect on his name. You got Sakari, uh, Alazar, putting John the Baptist on his name on uh, um, on calls, on YouTube video calls. Complete mockery. You are not John the Baptist. If you John the Baptist, then who the hell is all these other men that came before you? Huh? If you, John the Baptist, who was Abba Bivens? You testify of yourself, young man. All right? And you should be giving double honors to the elders and the apostles, man, including Abba Bivens. Very disrespectful, young man. And Lord is going to repay you double for that, for your for your wickedness, man. All right? So let me, um, let me go get some prophecy, prophecy. Not talking about the Kashi 6 ix 9 We're talking about prophecy. These people ought to be ashamed of themselves. Let me see. Right? And this is prophecy, mathematical prophecy. This is Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. After three days and a half, which a day represents 100 years, a half is, a, is 50 years. So that's after 350 years, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And what was the starting point of that? The starting point was of that is 1969, which is the the premier year of our captivity and slavery in America. All right. And on a large amount. All right. So and then that latter year of the 350 year period is 1969, which was the year of um, Ab Bivens was actually martyred and assassinated in the year that the old school was established. That's biblical prophecy. And the the assassination in the old school is what brought forth that wisdom and fruit all right, through the spirit. That's why I said the spirit of life from God entered in, in, entered in unto them. And when you saw it in the 70s, 80s, 90s, right now, you know, the 2000s and right now, all the many camps, all the many Israelites is waking up. Um, it, you know, so many men called on the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahshah, going into this history, going into prophecy, going into current events, you know, putting on that, you know, that garment uh, that Yahweh Shah has, has sown for us, man, has purchased for us. And we are, but if we don't have that garment, we naked. Keep that in mind. Um, let's see here. Because that garment was gotten by the blood of his sacrifice. Mm. But I'll continue to read. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I read that as well. It says, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up into heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And how did Elijah, how was Elijah, well, how was his end? <laughs> he was, he ascended up into clouds as well, into UFOs, chariots. And that's the manner that the elect will be delivered. Um, let's see here. That's 350-year prophecy. Let's see. I think it's what It's another one. Let's see here. There's one in Daniel. Damn it. Should like it. All right. Let me see. See. 
Oh, nice day in here. When I was um, you know, if if the Lord if the Spirit permit, I put in the um description. But yeah, essentially, Elijah or John the Baptist fulfilled that role as in the carnation of that time period and in the carnation of this time period, he fulfilled that lo- that role as being the herald of our Lord and Savior Howard Shah as um Abba Bivens. All right. So um, yeah, that was just a quick hit through the spirit. You know, the the faithful were here. Give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh Shemel Shah. Shalom, keep the faith.